Hi, I am Sohail. Today I am going to talk about structure and composition of nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. The main points of the lesson are types of cells, components of nucleus and cargo complex. Cell nucleus is an organelle that is bounded by double membrane. Nucleus is present in eukaryotic cells and nucleus contains majority of cells genetic material. Nucleus is singular, nuclei is plural. The term nucleus is derived from Latin word that means kernel or seed. As we know that organisms are classified into two groups that is prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes they do not have nucleus so their genetic material is directly present in the cytoplasm while in case of eukaryotic cell that is animal cell and plant cell they have clear nucleus and inside the nucleus genetic material is present in the form of chromosomes. Cells are divided into three types based on the number of nuclei that is uninucleate, multinucleate and anucleate. Majority of animal and plant cells they have one nucleus so they are called uninucleate. Multinucleate cells they contain more than one nuclei and they have large quantity of cytoplasm. Examples of multinucleate cells are skeletal muscle cells, liver cells, osteoclast which are bone dissolving cell. So this is osteoclast number of nuclei that varies from 3 to 4 and in some cases up to 50 nuclei they are present in osteoclast. Some cells of fungi they are also multinucleate the plant body of fungi is thread like structure which is called hyphae and each cell has two nuclei that is binucleate and anucleate cells without nucleus that is erythrocytes red blood cell newly formed red blood cell that has nucleus but when they become mature they lose their nuclei. Shape and size of nucleus. The shape of nucleus is spherical and their average diameter is 5 micrometer. In this lecture I am going to focus on the structure and composition of nucleus. So we are going to discuss nuclear envelope that is nuclear membrane, structure of nuclear pore, nucleoplasm, nuclear lamina, nucleolus, chromatin and chromosomes. Nuclear envelope, nucleus that is bounded by two membranes and these two membranes they are separated by 20 to 40 nanometer outer nuclear membrane that is continuous with endoplasmic reticulum and nuclear envelope that has many pores. The composition of nuclear membrane is same like cell membrane that is composed of phospholipid bilayer. So this is a nucleus that is bounded by double nuclear membrane that is outer nuclear membrane and inner nuclear membrane and nuclear membrane that has these small openings which are called pores and nuclear membrane is also continuous with endoplasmic reticulum. Structure of nuclear pore. As we know that nucleus it is bounded by two membrane like here this is outer nuclear membrane and this is inner nuclear membrane. Outer and inner nuclear membrane at some points it is continuous that results in the formation of small opening that is called nuclear pore. Each nuclear pore that consists of 500 to 1000 molecules and these 500 to 1000 molecules they contain 30 different types of proteins. A vertebrate cell that is not dividing it may contain several thousand nuclear pores. So this is outer nuclear membrane, this one is inner nuclear membrane, here is cytoplasm, here is nucleoplasm and this is the point where outer and inner nuclear membrane they are continuous that results in the formation of a pore which is called nuclear pore and this nuclear pore it contains 500 to 1000 molecules. These molecules they contain 30 different types of proteins. Each pore is formed 
by a bracelet shaped complex. Here is the bracelet shaped complex. It has two phases. One is cytoplasmic phase and second is nuclear phase. Towards the cytoplasmic phase, there is a ring which is called cytoplasmic ring. And towards the nuclear phase, there is another ring which is called nuclear ring. Cytoplasmic ring that has eight cytoplasmic filaments. Towards the nuclear ring, behind the nuclear ring, nuclear basket is present. So, this is the nuclear basket which is present behind the nuclear ring. This is cytoplasmic ring. Outer and inner nuclear membrane, they are continuous in this point where a small opening is present in the nuclear membrane and that small opening is called nuclear pore. What is the function of nuclear membrane? Nuclear membrane, it helps in the free movement of ions and molecules between cytoplasm and nucleoplasm. It regulates the passage of proteins and RNA protein complexes. Now, what is cargo complex? As we know that protein is synthesized in cytoplasm and some proteins they are transported from cytoplasm to nucleoplasm. For the transport of that protein, it contains a special signal which is called NLS that is nuclear localization signal. This nuclear localization signal, it contains a particular sequence of amino acids. A structure which is present in cytoplasm that is called importins. This importin that binds with NLS to form a complex which is called cargo complex. Now, this cargo complex that is received by nuclear pore machinery and the protein is transferred from cytoplasm to nucleoplasm. Now, why the protein is transferred from cytoplasm to nucleoplasm, I will talk about that in another video that is about ribosomes. The transport mechanism through the nuclear pore is fast. Proteins containing NLS sequence moves with the rate of 2000 molecules per second. If NLS is removed from the protein, then that protein is blocked in cytoplasm that cannot be transferred from cytoplasm to nucleoplasm. What is nucleoplasm? Nuclear membrane that bounds a gel-like structure inside the nucleus, that gel-like structure is known as nucleoplasm. Nucleoplasm contains chromatin and nucleolus. Nucleoplasm that is also known as karyoplasm and its composition is similar to cytosol that it contains salts, nutrients and essential chemicals. What is nuclear lamina? Nuclear lamina, the inner surface of nuclear envelope. This is outer nuclear membrane, this one is inner nuclear membrane. Inside the inner nuclear membrane, there is a network of fibers is present. This network of fiber is known as nuclear lamina. What is nuclear lamina? Nuclear lamina, it is a network of fibers which is present inside the inner nuclear membrane. So, this is outer nuclear membrane. This one is inner nuclear membrane. Inside the inner nuclear membrane, there is a network of fibers is present. And this network of fibers that is known as nuclear lamina. So, nuclear lamina that is the inner lining of inner nuclear membrane. And this nuclear lamina, it is composed of intermediate filament fibers. Now, what is the function of this nuclear lamina? Nuclear lamina that supports the nuclear membrane. Nuclear lamina that is also responsible to organize the contents present inside the nucleus. And nuclear lamina that gives a definite shape to the nucleus and it is involved in deconstruction and reconstruction of nuclear envelope. What is deconstruction and reconstruction of nuclear envelope? When a cell undergoes cell division, we know that mitotic phase of cell cycle, it is divided into two main categories. One is called mitosis that is also known as karyokinesis and second is known as cytokinesis. Karyokinesis that is the division of nucleus and cytokinesis that is the division of cytoplasm. Now, during karyokinesis, there are four stages like prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. In prophase stage, 
nuclear membrane that is present around the chromosomes. But at the end of the prophase stage, nuclear membrane disappear and metaphase stage that starts. So, this nuclear me membrane that disappears at the end of the prophase stage, that is the deconstruction of nuclear membrane. And this deconstruction of nuclear membrane that takes place with the help of nuclear lamina. When the nuclear division completes like in telophase stage, then the nuclear membrane reappears. So, when nuclear membrane reappears, that is the reconstruction of nuclear envelope. So, this is reconstruction of nuclear envelope and deconstruction of nuclear envelope that takes place during the cell division. Nucleolus. Nucleolus is singular, nucleoli is plural. So, in this diagram you can see there is one nucleolus which is present here in the inside the nucleus in nucleoplasm. Nucleolus it is not bounded by any membrane and a darkly staining region which is present inside the nucleus that is called nucleolus. Nucleolus is known as factory of ribosomes because the ribosomes are assembled inside the nucleolus. Each nucleolus that has a nucleolar organizer and this nucleolar organizer it is made up of overlapping regions of DNA of several chromosomes and the DNA which is present here in this nucleolar region that contains instructions for the synthesis of RNA and RNA which is synthesized inside the nucleolus that is called ribosomal RNA because the ribosomes they are assembled inside the nucleolus and inside the ribosomes ribosomal RNA is present. So, this ribosomal RNA which is synthesized inside the nucleolus that combines with protein to assemble the smaller and larger subunits of ribosomes and these smaller and larger subunits of ribosomes which are assembled inside the nucleolus that comes in nucleoplasm later on they move from nucleoplasm to cytoplasm where they are used in the synthesis of proteins. Chromatin are chromosomes. Chromosomes they are present inside the nucleus, but chromosomes they are only visible when cell undergoes cell division. In non-dividing cells chromosomes they are present in the form of chromatin. Chromosome it is composed of DNA and a protein which is called histone and DNA is organized into functional units that is called genes and genes they control the cell activities. In dividing cells chromosomes they are visible especially in metaphase stage and if the DNA molecules in 46 chromosomes of one human cell that could be stretched out they would extend for 2 meters. So, this is a cell nucleus. Inside the nucleus you can see clearly here chromosomes are present. In humans how many chromosomes are present in one cell nucleus that is 23 pairs of chromosomes mean 46 chromosomes. And chromosomes they are composed of DNA and protein that is called histone. In non-dividing cells chromosomes are present in the form of thread like structure that is called chromatin. And in eukaryotes the number of chromosomes are specific like in humans 46 chromosomes and fruit fly that has 8 chromosomes. Chromosomes they are only visible when the cell is ready to divide. Let us watch this animation. Cells are the smallest living units of an organism. All cells have three things in common, no matter what type of cell they are. All cells have a cell membrane, which separates the inside of the cell from its environment, cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like fluid, and DNA, which is the cell's genetic material. There are two broad categories of cells. The first category is eukaryotic cells. They have organelles which include the nucleus and other special parts. Eukaryotic cells 
are more advanced, complex cells, such as those found in plants and animals. The second category is prokaryotic cells. They don't have a nucleus or membrane-enclosed organelles. They do have genetic material, but it's not contained within a nucleus. Prokaryotic cells are always one-celled or unicellular organisms, such as bacteria. So what are organelles? Organelle means little organ. Organelles are the specialized parts of a cell that have unique jobs to perform. Let's start with the nucleus, the control center of the cell. The nucleus contains DNA, or genetic material. DNA dictates what the cell is going to do and how it's going to do it. Chromatin is the tangled, spread out form of DNA found inside the nuclear membrane. When a cell is ready to divide, DNA condenses into structures known as chromosomes. The nucleus also contains a nucleolus, which is a structure where ribosomes are made. After ribosomes leave the nucleus, they will have the important job of synthesizing or making proteins. Let's sum up. Organisms are divided into two main categories, that is prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes, they don't have nucleus, while eukaryotes, they have nucleus. There are three types of cells. Cells containing one nucleus is called uninucleate. Cells containing more than one nuclei, they are called multinucleate. And cells without nucleus, they are called anucleate. Components of nucleus. Nucleus is bounded by double nuclear membrane. A nuclear membrane that has small openings which are called nuclear pore. In nuclear pore, outer and inner nuclear membrane is continuous. That results in the formation of nuclear pore. Inner nuclear membrane that encloses a jelly-like substance which is called nucleoplasm or karyoplasm. And inside the inner surface of inner nuclear membrane, a fibrous structure, intermediate filaments are present that is called nuclear lamina. This nuclear lamina that is responsible for maintaining the shape, it's like a skeleton. In nucleus, if one darkly strained structure is present, that is called nucleolus. Nucleoli is plural. That is a factory of ribosomes where the ribosomes are assembled. Chromosomes, they are visible in case of dividing cells. And chromatin is thread-like structure that's present in non-dividing cells. The protein which is transferred from cytoplasm to nucleoplasm, this transport of protein takes place in the form of cargo complex. That protein contains NLS. NLS that is nuclear localization signal, which is a sequence of amino acids. Then a structure which is present in cytoplasm, which is called importin, that importin binds with NLS to form this complex, which is called cargo complex. Now this cargo complex that is captured by the nuclear pore mechanism and in this way the protein is transferred from cytoplasm to nucleoplasm.